Greetings and welcome to an episode of LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today it is this thing right here, the Datasonic's Pareos cassette tape storage device from 1994. You could get around a gigabyte of storage on a teeny tiny little cassette tape that is uh, smaller than anything else that was ever made on the consumer market. Yeah, how does this work? Well, let's dive right into it. So this is the Datasonics Pareos, introduced at the end of 1994 for a suggested price of 795 US dollars. It is a data backup system that connects via the parallel port and weighs just 10 ounces fully loaded, or around 280 grams. And it fit in the palm of your hand and ran on just two AA batteries. So a very tiny thing, and that was a big selling point, but the most important one was that it stored up to 1.25 gigabytes of data on tapes the size of a postage stamp being the equivalent of over 850 floppy disks. And this was at a time when a 300 megabyte hard drive would still be considered quite large. Even the iOmega zip drive introduced around the same time only held 100 megs per disk and was much larger and required an AC adapter to be plugged in. So how did it pull it off? Well, it all starts with these rebadged Sony NT tapes, the smallest cassette tapes ever made, with these from Datasonics costing $34.95 each on introduction. But yeah, they really are just Sony NT tapes. They were digital micro tapes that were originally launched in 1992 for use in Sony field recording and dictation devices like the NT1 and NT2. Sometimes marketed as the Sony Scoop Man, they recorded digitally instead of the analog method used on the more common compact cassette and micro cassette recorders, and the resulting audio quality was notably high, as demonstrated in a short YouTube video by Techmoan some years back, a video that I do recommend, so check it out! But yeah, the NT was subsequently adapted for data storage use in the early 90s by Datasonics, a company co-founded by Juan Rodriguez, the serial entrepreneur and pioneer in development of computer data storage products in and around Boulder, Colorado. And man, this guy is fascinating, but the gist of his technical career is that he started at IBM in 1963, where he left to co-found the Storage Technology Corporation, aka Storage Tech, in and around Louisville, Colorado in 1969. They became a Fortune 500 company by making tape and disk drives for various business computer systems throughout the 1970s and early 80s. Rodriguez then founded Exabyte alongside X storage tech engineers in 1985, innovating in the area of higher speed, more reliable tape backup systems using helical scan technology. Their breakout product was the EXB8200, which they claimed was the world's first 8mm helical scan computer storage subsystem. Then he was approached in 1992 about a new tape backup system in development using Sony's NT format. And it was promising enough that he helped co-found the Datasonics Corporation to sell it under the name Pareos. Pareos, Pareos, I'm going with Pareos. And why did they choose that name? Well, I can't find the original intent, but I did find that in Esperanto, Pareos is the future tense of Pere, which means that it translates to impending doom or will perish. A great name for an ambitious new product if I've ever heard one. Anyway, the Pareos storage system was achieved by building on the NT's non-tracking system, which NT stands for, by the way. This meant instead of tracing each tape track individually, the rotary head inside could read multiple tracks at once. So it divided your data into blocks of information all across the tracks of the tape in order to achieve higher capacity and read-write speeds. To quote Mr. Rodriguez on the topic, so these Data Sonics guys were basically packetizing the format where it will say, hey look, we have packets, I can read a packet either at this revolution or the next revolution, and later on I'll assemble it. That's kind of what they did in a very primitive sort of way. It was an audio product, so they didn't care about a lot of data reliability things because audio is not really that way. But they had a concept here that was great. In fact, we were so impressed by the performance of this technology, we basically took a Sony mechanism and put our own electronics around it and were able to get a gigabyte out of it. Hmm, funny how Juan Rodriguez sounds just like Matt from Techmoan. What a coincidence. 
Anyway, the challenges Data Sonics faced were immediately apparent, even with some positive buzz in the press, it quickly dropped in price over the next two years, hitting $499 by 1995, and even after updating the software for Windows 95, it was not long for this world. The product was dead by 1996, and the company along with it, having produced only around 12,000 units. This was due to a variety of factors, and one of the biggest ones was that costs were just too high from the very beginning, both at the end-user level and manufacturing. Sony charged them more than they had initially promised for the drives and tapes. Then the final nail in the coffin was the value of the yen dropping from 110 down to 79 per US dollar, and yeah, it was just over for Datasonics. Mr. Rodriguez went on to found Ecrix and improved the same packet storage technology to develop the VXA tape backup system, now owned by Overland Storage's Tandberg Data. And along with some consultation work, Rodriguez is currently an adjunct professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder. We had enough backstory, let's open the box and try this thing out. It took me quite some time to find one of these things, and so far it's the only complete example I've seen show up on eBay. Well, almost complete, as it didn't come with the manual or the original discs, but like I said, it's the only one I found, so I'll take it. It did come with a backup CDR of the software, as well as an original Datasonics NT tape, and yes, you can just use regular Sony NT tapes as well. There's also an external power supply in here if you don't want to use batteries, and the adapter that connects to the base unit to provide the parallel cable connector and the compartment for your two AA batteries. And finally, there's the Pareos drive itself tucked away in this neat little box. And this is a very basic but rather pleasing design if I do say so myself. It's about the size of an action camera like a GoPro Hero or something, or maybe a small bar of soap. Feels good in the hands and only has the one button on it, which is for ejecting the tape slot. And like the Sony NT recorders, it has this dual action mechanism going on where one press opens the slot and the next one presents you the tray. Ah, now that is just satisfying. So yeah, you get your tape installed in there and then plugged into the adapter to get the parallel port and battery situation going on. And then you plug this into your computer of choice. And this is Windows 3.1 compatible. So yeah, it's plugged in. Let's get the software installed and get to backing up some stuff on the world's smallest cassette tape. Right, so I've got an HP Vectra VL5, a Pentium 133 system from the mid-90s that I found was pretty appropriate for the era that this thing was in its prime, and the installation was very straightforward. Nothing really special there, you just install it, and then it detected that the Pareos was plugged in and the parallel port was configured correctly, and it seems to be. So let's go ahead and back some stuff up. And yes, this is the Datasonics Pareos software version 6.20. Yeah, it is from 1997. This was distributed by J&J &J Peripherals in Colorado, a little bit after Datasonics went under. They sold this thing at a discount through the end of the 90s, or maybe in their very early 2000s, from what I can tell from their website archives. And yes, the Windows 95 version of the software, there was a Windows 3.1, like I mentioned earlier, but that's not what mine came with, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this. Uh, the configuration is pretty simple. You can do some stuff like uh, setting up a password and select your different users. So you can just have certain users doing certain things as far as backing up only certain stuff. If you want to protect things, you can clean the drive, uh, erase the tape and the label, repair it and stats and all sorts of stuff. What does this drive status do? All right, cool. So yeah, it tells me that I have it plugged in via AC power, which I do. I don't have any batteries in there right now. Uh, attached to LPT1, and it is, uh, yeah, cool. Recommends that you clean it every 12 hours. And yeah, there were a few different things that it wanted me to check out here. Um, this is what, I, I did the select optimal settings and I did some tests, and this is what it came up with for as quick as I can because I have uh, ECP slash EPP enabled. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start saving some files. All right, so here are the contents of my hard disk drive. It's only a couple gigs, this entire drive. Yeah, let's just do something small here first. I'm just gonna back up the media folder. And uh, that's it. Session name. Okay, yeah, let's just call this uh, LGR session one. And here we go. It looks like it is going to try and save some stuff on this blank tape that I have. Hmm, how exciting. Oh my. It's making noises. <laughs> Don't know how well you can hear that. Let me get a little bit closer with my phone camera.
Yay, it seems to be doing its thing. That is awesome. It's at least making noise and spinning around and numbers are happening, so uh, that's a good sign. All right, it says it wrote everything to the tape. Uh, I didn't have to do any repositioning or rewrite counts. Compression is 1.17 to 1. But yeah, it is uh, automatically compressing those files just a little bit, although there's not a whole lot to compress in this case, but uh, yeah, all right, cool. Well, let's see if we can recover them. Man, this is exciting. <laughs> it sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but no, seriously, this, this is exciting. I love using weird backup systems, especially from tape. There's just something special about it. So it shows my session here that we just had. Yeah, here's the files available from tape, and that's everything. Uh, there it is. Now what I want to actually do here is back up uh, an entire game, like several hundred megabytes, so it's probably going to take a little while, but uh, I want to do it and just see if it gets everything correctly. Oh crap, I don't want to do that. No, don't accidentally tilt it to back up the entire hard drive. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that'd be quite the test as well. Uh, you sure, why the hell not? I mean, it's only 800 something megabytes. I'm just gonna call this uh, Vectra HDD, no password. Actually, no, I do want a password. No, I don't want a password. And yeah, let's just reinitialize it. So it's just gonna wipe out everything here and uh, give the volume a new name. We'll kind of call that LGR Backup. And here we go. So yeah, this is the erase and labeling tape uh, setup process here, which it had me do when I was setting up the drive for the first time. All right, well, that took a good couple minutes, a little longer than it did to just wipe the or initially blank tape, which I guess that makes sense because I had written some things on there, but now it's gonna start doing the backup process. All right, there it goes. 7,246 files, uh, around 873 megabytes. Yeah. Well, I fully anticipate this is gonna take a while, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the camera and then come back as soon as it's complete. So this is interesting. It reached 95% of the 830 megabytes or so, and it's saying that both sides of the one tape are full. Oh well, I do have another tape here, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it keep going. All right, well that took just shy of three hours, about two hours and 50 minutes. Had several repositioning cycles and a bunch of uh, rewriting attempts. However, it does seem to have gotten everything saved, although again, it didn't actually do it all on one tape. I had to split it up amongst one and a half. Yeah, this was the exact amount that we tried to back up here, 880 megabytes. Let's see if we can recover some of them now. So we go back to introduce volume here, and it's the same process all over again. I'll just let you know uh, after this if it was able to fully recover a good chunk of my files or not. Be right back. All right, so it took almost exactly one hour to recover that 168 megabyte game. I chose pod. Let me go ahead and see if it did it successfully. Nice. Well, it runs like crap because this pretty much is running software directly and a crappy like one megabyte video chipset. So uh, it runs like garbage, but it does run. That means it recovered everything that it needed to to get the game loaded from the hard drive. So that is pretty friggin' great. Gotta say, it is mighty slow, <laughs> but it does the job. But I guess that's a trade-off that you make for not only using the parallel port, but also just being such a ridiculously portable audio format that's been reconfigured for data storage. Still, it works without a hitch. That's something. Well, that's about it for this episode of Oddware on the rather fascinating Datasonic's Pareos cassette tape backup system. I'm just super amused that the Sony NT format was reused, repurposed for data storage. I mean, you know, why not, right? There are plenty of tape-based storage backup systems, and of the others that I've used, especially those from Colorado and Quantum and whatnot, uh, this is the most interesting by far, just due to the fact that it uses this teeny tiny little postage stamp sized thing. But at the same time, I also see why it didn't exactly succeed in any sense of the word. It was just so expensive and you really didn't need to move around that much storage very often. And if you did, you're probably gonna go with one of the more established uh, tape backup systems. And so people did. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to have one of the 12,000 here and I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at it with me. 
And if you did, then awesome, thank you very much, and perhaps you'd like to stick around and see more of my videos, oddware and hardware and software and all sorts of stuff in between every Monday and Friday. Also, special thank you to Matt from Techmoan for supplying his voice. Seriously, his channel is awesome, and if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. And as always, thank you very much for watching.